Hey everybody, welcome back to Linkscast. I'm your host Matt, and I'm Tyler. Uh, yeah, so welcome to the Linkscast. This is the Linkscast where we talk about Linuxy things and how awesome Linux is. That's usually what we do. To this time, well, not so much. Instead, what we're gonna do, Tyler, is we're gonna talk about the absolute horrendous mess that Linux is, and these are all based on recent experiences and i'm when i'm talking about recent i mean within the last half hour <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so this podcast did not want to happen like it, it, and it just didn't want to happen like it was like there was there's some kind of cosmic entity out there that said fuck off you're not doing a podcast today go do something else maybe it's time to go outside for a little while because you don't want to do a podcast um all right so let's just first begin Wait, let's let's go back to Sunday. Let's just time travel back to Sunday. Sunday night, I was going to do my first regular solo live stream in months. Like I, I used to do it every Sunday. I got away from it. Uh, actually, I got away from it right about that time you and I were going to do a live stream on o zero AD, and my my audio fucked up. So after that, I pretty much never live stream again, just on my own because it just obviously was not going to work. Uh, so last night, I was going to, or not last night, but Sunday night, I was going to live stream me racing i3 over and over again, just to create some themes. And uh, yeah, audio pipe wire fucked me over. So that's when my audio problems decided to start. So today, Tyler and I decided we were going to do a podcast because we do a podcast every Thursday live on YouTube around three o'clock Eastern time. It's amazing. Would, would people please stop adding me on discord? Every, <laughs> stop that discord <laughs> freezes every time I get a notification. Okay. I'm recording a podcast. Stop that bullshit. Bullshit. Uh, <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> Stop messaging me on Discord. I love you guys, every single one of you, but stop messaging me. <laughs> but anyways, we got, we got on uh, to do the podcast today. And last week, Tyler and I, we literally had hard-ons for the whole freaking episode about how awesome Jitsi was. I mean, we, we talked about it for the entire, like, two-hour podcast, right? I mean, like, mm-hmm. at the beginning, middle, and end, like, oh my god, I can't believe how good Jitsi is. It's so good. It's, I mean, it's free and open source and amazing. This beats the crap out of Discord 100%. Yeah. About that. <laughs> well, opening up this week, Tyler can't hear me. His audio looks like it's coming from 1995. And and I'm, I'm not talking 320p. I'm talking like 120p. Like, it literally looks like you would... It would look good on a flip phone, is what I'm talking about, from like the 1990s. And yeah, so Jitsi did not happen. It was horrendous. Like, he, he, like I said, he couldn't hear me. I could hardly see him. It was blurry. It was not good. Uh, and... Don't know what the problem was there. Like, there's no, there's no salute, there's no changing. Like, there's no set it's settings to edit when it just doesn't no. work. It's just either it works or it doesn't. No. So, ten decided to go back to old faithful into Discord. Of course, all of our transforms in OBS were set up for last week when we we Tyler and I spent an hour and a half last week getting the transforms of every single scene in OBS to work with Jitsi, with the Jitsi, the layout and stuff. So, of course, going back to Discord ruined all that. So, Tyler, I hate Linux. (laughs) I hate it so much. Well, I I love it. How can you, how can you hate something you love so much? All right. Um, Pretty easily, because uh, sometimes it's not, it's not even, um, uh, odd that you don't like it. Um, we got beat in so many different ways just trying to record a podcast. Because I don't know if you remember it, but also before we even realized just how bad Jitsi was, because I it wasn't even that I just couldn't hear you. It was like a screeching, like crackly audio sound coming through the my earphones at like 
shredded my ears. And then before that, I also, for some reason, could not get the actual show notes for today's podcast. Oh, I, for, I, I forgot about that. And I still, exactly. Oh, I know exactly what I did. So usually when I push stuff up to get get lab, I do get add and then a period to just add the whole thing. It, it literally uploads everything, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but I was told not to do that. I was told just to do get add dash u, which will just send up the updated files. But apparently that doesn't actually work. It didn't send the updated files because it's, I don't know why, like it just didn't do it. So 6, 610 was sitting in my podcast files folder, but it wasn't getting added by GitLab dash u or get, get add dash u. It just wasn't there. So it was, that was completely my fault because I changed to the way you're supposed to do it. And apparently uh, that's not the way you're supposed to do it. Who the fuck knows how to use Git? I mean, apparently nobody. Uh, Peter, I just use Adam. Yeah, it uh, makes it real simple. Uh, Peter said we, we need our own Jitsi server. We know we're we're we'll, we'll, we will work on that this week. We said we we're going to do it last week, but yeah. on, are you new here? It's going to take us a few months. Exactly. <laughs> we'll eventually get around. To we'll it. get there. Like, oh, this week or next week. That typically means in about three to four weeks, possibly six. We'll we'll get to it. Weeks. I was thinking more in the long of three to four months range. I mean, it we don't me- tell them that <laughs> until the last update. Okay? <laughs> it, it it took me uh, like what three years <laughs> to get a website up and running, uh, but uh, it does exist. It does Next. exist, and there That's are blog matters. posts on there, by the way. So. Uh, if you want to see some of my blog posts, you can go there and read them. If you like those po- blog posts a week early, you can support me on Patreon. Just going to put that out there. So, uh, yeah. I- now, before we go straight back into just piling on how much went wrong, um, I will go ahead and say I stopped paying for uh, or I, I didn't renew my domain for zany.org and I've closed down uh, my Gemini capsule. I backed up everything I had on there, but. Uh, I'm going to stop paying for it. And the kind of goal is to see if really like how many people notice or even care because I'm, I'm spending about, uh, about a hundred dollars a year keeping that up. Um, so I just want to see whether or not anybody cares because if people want it back, I'll bring it back. Or if people would rather me just take and get a website eventually, um, Maybe I'll do that, but I just wanted to say, like, hey, if there's anybody who does watch this and then checks it out, it's not up anymore. Okay, it's it's not like it's been DDoSed or something. I I know it's down. I yeah. It. Um. So Peter asked, do, "Does my website have an RSS feed?" The answer to that is no. Um. Of course it doesn't. It will eventually. <laughs> Someday. In about, in about what? Like about next week. It'll happen. It definitely it's not going to happen next week. <laughs> Brother, that, that, that means it's about six months. Come on now. <laughs> I don't, I, I'm pretty sure six months is even kind of a little bit too optimistic. <laughs> I, the problem with the RSS feed is that, A, I don't know how to do it. Second of all, there's no feed to for it to grab onto. There's just links. I don't know if that will work or not. Because literally, all my website is is HTML and CSS. That's all there is. There's no like blogging back end. It's not WordPress, none of that stuff. So I don't, I'm, I'm assuming there's a way to do it. I just don't know how. So um, I'll, maybe, if I figure it out, I'll figure it out. Um, yes. Yeah, so yeah, no RSS feed. Uh, it has been proven, that website has proven to be a pain in the ass to update though, because, because the, I should have, I really should have just freaking used WordPress. I'm just saying, just, just use WordPress, yeah. but uh, it, it's too late now. Um, yeah, I, the reason why I didn't use Hugo was because I was much too uh, interested in doing it on my own. I was very stubborn about it. I should have used something else. Anyways, yeah. So um, let's talk about Pipewire, shall we? Let's yes. just let's just dive into Pipeware. Uh, Pipeware is great if you don't do anything with audio. I'm just gonna put that out there right now. If you all you do is watch YouTube videos, Pipewire is gonna be perfectly fine for you. Like you're never gonna have a problem with Pipeware ever, and it will just work perfectly fine. It's when you start doing other things like adding in audio interfaces 
and adding in uh, OBS and try to, to do multiple sources from different places, it's going to screw you over. And there's going to be those people out there who say, well, I've never had problems with Pipewire, even doing all that complicated stuff. Like I, I use stuff that would require a jack on Pipe Pulse, Pulse Audio, and it worked fine. Well, bully for you, mister. <laughs> You know, yeah. You know, like every time I use a distro that uses Pipewire by default, or as an, even as an overlay for Pulse Audio, it screws me over. Like every single time. Like I've never been in a certain in a single situation where eventually, like sometimes it works fine. Like it seems to be working okay right now. Like mm -hmm. nobody's in, nobody in the chat has said the audio is bad. Um, but. There's that one time when you like you absolutely need it to work like oh you're gonna do a stream and pipe pipe is like <laughs> no you're not <laughs> no you're not <laughs> it's just like I don't I don't I mean, see, like that's the thing with pipewire it will mess up in weird situations and then pulse audio when it messes up it's not a weird situation it's just well you're kind of screwed. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, I totally agree. So let me tell you what was going on. And this is the stupidest thing. Like, it is the absolute dumbest thing you'll have ever heard. So when I got onto YouTube and got all the live stream stuff set up and open up OBS and hit the, the start streaming button and was chatting with people in the, the or wanted to start chatting with people, you know, like, in a, like a pre show kind of thing, right? And they couldn't hear me. So I was like, well, you want to know what? Pulse Audio and Pipewire, they always are mixing up input sources. Like you do an update, it forgets your input source and you have to go and change it back to a, the default to whatever it's supposed to be, right? Does it all the time. It's been doing it for years, even when it was just Pulse Audio. So I open up Pulse Mixer, which is what I use instead of Pavu Control. It basically does the same thing. It's just in the terminal for nerds, right? Yep. And I get into the inputs tab and is doing the weirdest thing. It's actually doing two weird things. First of all, I have an amp DAC that sits on my desk. It's where my headphones plug in. All it does, it's an output source. Like it, it sends output so I can hear stuff. It has nothing to do with input whatsoever. Whatever reason, OBS was treating it as an input. Like you can, like you can, you know, if you go into Pavu Control and it has that one page where that only shows up when you have apps that are actually using the yeah. input or output, right? And it tells you what sources th those are using. Well, in that page, one of the sources that OBS was using was the AMP DAC, which is only an output source, but it was for inputs. Like, what? <laughs> like, it's, it has nothing to do with input whatsoever. It's all output. So that was one thing it was doing. The other weird thing it was doing was that random devices were connecting and disconnecting. Like they were either disappear, come back on, disappear, come back on, disappear, come back on. And so, well, if that was just one device, like if it was just the DAC or AMP, you know, the DAC AMP thing, if it was just that, I would assume that was going bad, right? Because, you know, obviously the cord's going bad or something. But no, it was also doing it with the internal sound card. It was also doing it with the uh, audio interface. It, it was like a, it was like somebody was randomly going through and unplugging one, plugging back in, one plugging one, plugging back in, uh, going and then like doing a circle of it. It was so, so weird. Those and and, it, and it, it, it would have been one thing if it was just one thing going wrong and then the other thing going wrong. Or but these things were happening at the same time. So I have no clue what was going on there. So I went into to Pavu Control. I actually decided, well, maybe it's Pulse Mixer that's going bad because I'm using Pipewire, right? So I went into Pavu Control and the, the Pipewire version of where the hell it is and uh, did some changing around. So I forcibly removed the DAC amp from that one page where things only show up. And... Uh, you know, changed it so that it was using the, the Focusrite Scarlet Solo up there, which is the, you know, the, the audio interface. And uh, so then I opened up OBS again, and the desktop audio source, which is just an output again, it's just an output, it just records the output of the speakers so that you can, you know, record the sounds that the 
computer makes, uh, for whatever reason, that was being treated as an input source. So when I was talking, both my mic and the desktop audio were, you know, you could see the levels going up. They were both going up at the same time. So it was treating my mic here uh, as desktop audio. Sick. Like, what? <laughs> now, I, I, I know I, I was using Pulse tools to mess around with Pipewire. And, and we've been blaming Pipewire for this whole time. But when I was just not, when it was just pipe, pipe, Pipewire, because... Cause, the thing is, is like pipe. They tell me that Pipeware is like a replacement for Pulse Audio, but really, most distros ship both of them. Like Arco, yeah. Arch have both of them installed, and they, it seems to use them both in some conglomeration of spaghetti that it tries to mm -hmm. make a an audio system. Yeah, and well, we, most distros use Pipeware as an overlay for Pulse. Yeah, and that just makes it so messy, man. Like, like yeah. if 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 you are going to Create a replacement for for Pulse Audio. Congratulations! I congratulate you on your willingness to spend a whole bunch of time on creating stuff that we don't need. But if you're going to shit or get off the pot, <laughs> and <laughs> and make a replacement, don't make an overlay for it. Like I understand what they're doing, they because they it, it it would take it would have taken them years to actually get to the point where it was usable. So they wanted to make it so that they could work in harmony together, so that you could actually use both. Uh, and hopefully get rid of some tools like Jack and stuff like that in order to do more complex stuff, right? That was their, I think that's what I think their goals, goal was anyways. But all they've done is make it so that occasionally your audio just shits the bed. Yeah. And, and granted, it did that with Pulse Audio too, but you're not fixing anything. We talked yeah. about this before, Tyler, when uh, we wondered why they didn't just make Pulse Audio better. Yeah, which would be the like I mean that would be the logical route to go down, but we don't live in that logical world anymore. People are spending thousands of dollars to buy NFTs, which are links to pictures. So, like, come on, man! Like, we live in crazy times right now. Um, and just thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars for stupid apes. Yeah, I mean, I mean they're. We have people who don't even understand the most basic of copyright. Like whether you're even against copyright or for copyright, that's not even part of the discussion. There are people out there who genuinely have no idea what copyright is or how it even works. Because, like, I mean, it, all, the, the world that we live in now, like, I, I'm, I'm not surprised at all that we have Wayland and Pipewire both coming in and Wayland is more so ready for most people than Pipewire is. Like, I mean, Pipewire again is, it's very iffy as to whether or not you're going to be able to run it and have a good experience without it being on top of Pulse Audio in the first place, which is a problem. They've made it so confusing okay because and you're right wayland is 100 times closer to being shippable software than pipewire is it's it's not even a conversation whether or not that's a true statement no because you you know something is ready for prime time when nvidia takes notice and decides they're going to start you know making the drivers work on it okay yep. you know it's the it's getting there okay I mean, that's like the barometer for, hey, is this ready? Yes. <laughs> NVIDIA knows what it is. Therefore, it's a little bit ready. Uh, when Satan supports it, yeah, it's it, it, it's probably ready. <laughs> right. So the, the thing with Pipeware is that we know what it is or what it was originally supposed to be, right? It was supposed to be something that w would help fix audio problems. Just non-technologically, that's what it's supposed to be, right? It's more technical than that, but whatever. But since then, it's now somehow become entrenched with Wayland as well to handle some video stuff, which is makes it even more messy. And like, we have this thing in the Unix sphere. It's called the Unix philosophy: do one thing, do it well, and do don't do other things. Right? Don't <laughs> if you're a washer that washes clothes, don't also be a, 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 a I don't know, a stove, you know, <laughs> those, th those things don't really, they're, they're not the same thing. They, they both might be near the kitchen, but they're not necessarily the same thing. Right. No. The 
why are we why are they trying to make pipe wire everything like like are we also going to have it be like a, a i don't know a window manager too i mean <laughs> well, i mean the problem is is it's it's a half baked piece of software as it stands now like pipe wire essentially in most cases like i mean again most cases is going to need pulse audio to even be usable in a like in a desktop environment which is I mean, if you don't, I mean, if you need a bigger example of something being half finished, like imagine your car most of the time needing a golf cart inside of it to actually be able to move from place to place. Like, like that's that, like what? Like that's a problem. And it's clearly half finished, but. And the biggest problem isn't that it's half finished or that it's not good or that it causes problem. The problem is that every single distribution is using it. Like yeah, every it's, single one. It, like we're trying to switch over to it already. Yeah, and it, it's it's not. And uh, add on top of that. So last, so Sunday night when I was having the problems, I was like, "You want to know what? Fuck it! I'm just going to uninstall Pipeware." Did you know that it's actually easier to uninstall Snaps from Ubuntu than it is to uninstall Pipeware from Arch? I'm just saying this because that's a true right. statement. It's absolutely true. Because did you want to? For whatever reason, it wouldn't even let me. I had to. Yeah. MPD, which has been around for longer than I've been alive, requires Pipewire as a dependency if Pipewire has been installed. Like it will work without it, but only if if you if you have Pipewire when you install MPD, it then considers Pipewire uh, dependency. So you have to well, see. Yeah, because I mean that makes sense. Because if Arch has now switched over to using and shipping with Pipewire. Because they're the one who builds their binaries yeah. for the distro, you're gonna now they're gonna all be built with Pipewire in mind. Fun. <laughs> it's just like every, every single. So if you do sudo pacman s on uh, Pipewire or R RNS Pipewire, and it tells you you can't do it, you you know you get those like warnings or whatever. Say hey, that this room. Which requires this or whatever. It was just like line after line. Like there was like 20 or 30 programs there that would re I would have to install uninstall first. And no doubt that every single one of those was also a dependency for something else. So by the time I would have been done, I would have installed half of my art system just to get rid of pipeware. And that's why I say it's easier to uninstall snaps from Ubuntu than it is to install pipeware from Arch. And that is saying something. And, and that's just the, it's it's the saddest thing to say. Like, like well, what? I mean, it's just it's it's very odd that we're moving in this direction because, it, like, it's it's weird because we've gotten so far in so many areas of just making Linux like not just usable, but but you being able to do a lot with it. And it seems like we're taking like two steps forward and then one step back, like just constantly. I don't understand it. Like, like we could be progressing much further. Can we please stop taking the freaking step back? Like, and uh, like, I, I don't know how you fix it, but I mean, like even with us, trying to do the podcast like so what was the the problem after jitsi because we still had more i can't i can't remember what, what the next problem was but it, it was well, we came over to, to uh discord and the green flashing was back oh because, well of course yeah because it's discord and i refused to stream with the 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 green flashing. I said, like, fuck it. We're just going to do this the old fashioned way and just record it audio only. <laughs> it was literally going to be audio only for the whole th thing. And I'm sure if, if that would have happened, um, something else would have went wrong too. I'm honestly like, seriously, when, when we said at the beginning of this, that you guys are lucky that this podcast actually happened. You are lucky that this podcast actually happened. We should have gave up after Ditsy yeah. because, and, uh, like, I mean, I had, I had to ask for us to stream. Cause I'm like, uh, I mean, like I know there's, a handful of people that I know for sure are expecting us to go live. And I'm like, I mean, I know we couldn't do it, but like, like, or not, I know that we could do it, but the problem is, is also what other problems are we going to find as soon as we go live? Um, which by the way, this stream went up as unlisted. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, 
So <laughs> like not only did the stream almost not happen when it started, there is a good chance that we could have live streamed for quite a while without noticing that no one could even join. It was unlisted. <laughs> In YouTube's defense, it was all my fault uh, because when you don't set up a live stream, because there's like a default live stream that's always available to you. Like if you hit live, it's just going to go live. But by default, that live stream is unlisted. So you got to actually go in and change that. Um, that's when you don't set up like a dedicated scheduled live stream. Drive stream. So that was my fault. And it was mostly because I was being lazy because I just at that point, I was just done. Right. I was just at the yeah, point where yeah. I was like, You're I just, like I, I had just spent another 15 minutes doing the transforms for OBS just so we could record the video. Uh, and then we, we decided that I wasn't going to use the video to stream for, for me on Discord at all. So I had to set up a camera on this uh, scene for me. And Tyler's using the one from Discord, um, which for some reason... For some reason, last uh, week, we didn't do that. Like, I ended up using the stream from Jitsi because it was so good. It just made sense for us to both be in similar aspect ratios. Not right now, if you, you're watching the video version of this, you'll notice that I'm in 16 by 9. Tyler's 4 by 3. It looks really weird. Um, and that's just because we're coming from two different sources and the transforms are a little bit different. Um, I probably could go through and do make the transforms you know a little bit different. I could zoom in on me, but... By that point, I was just, you know, done. So, yeah. uh, the, I mean, the, it didn't give you too many problems. And, like, it's, it, I don't know. It's just one of those things where it can get really annoying when you just want to get something done. And, like, today was just one of those days where, like, this, the statement of when it rains, it pours, like, rung true, like, very true. Because it wasn't just one issue; it was a back to back to back. I want to go ahead. The stream was good. The stream has spun, has started out good, as far as I can tell. So. Yeah, and no, like nobody's complained about audio yet, so I'm assuming that everybody can actually hear us, and the levels are fairly decent. Like I'm not really too soft or something, but um, I didn't even bother asking if the audio was good. <laughs> I didn't even <laughs> care. <laughs> All right, so I, I want to broaden our bitching just a little bit. We've been focusing on audio for just a few minutes. So I want to talk a, a little bit about Linux itself. It is we can we can all agree that Linux is Linux. Like the the for the most part no matter what distribution you're going to use, you're going to be using a Linux kernel probably from the last year or so. Unless you're going to download like the previous LTS of Ubuntu in which case even then, you're going to be using a fairly recent kernel. I think they're on 5.10 right now, which is from like a year and a half ago. You're not going to be using like 4. Dot something, which is what the uh, Debian was using before Buster came out, or Bullseye. Um, the point is, is that Linux is Linux. When you install it on a computer, no matter what distribution you have, you should have a similar experience no matter what, distribu what distribution you've chosen. The only things that should change are your desktop environment and your package manager. Those are the only two things that should change. Uh, but everything should function basically the same because it's a Linux kernel, which is what controls the interaction between the hardware and the software and causes things to work, right? That's the way it's supposed to go. Uh, however, we all know that that's not the way it works. Uh, yeah. Zany has found a home on Gen 2. It seems to work very, very well on his hardware. Uh, but if he was good to go install Elementary OS right now, half of the <sighs> shit would not work. Okay. No. I'm just going to put that out there. Um, it, uh, I, TFL has had similar problems on on some of his videos that he's he's made in the past, where he's you know he's he's on Ubuntu 18 out of four for reason because he knows it works very well with his hardware. When he's tried other distros, he's had problems getting things to work. Every single Linux user out there has had this experience where you can install one distro. And it just will not absolutely work with something like the Wi-Fi won't work or the brightness is wonky or there's, excuse me, horrible screen tearing or something. And you mm -hmm. can go to a different distribution that's using the exact same kernel 
and it works fine. Like, mm-hmm. And it works fine. And you don't know why. Like there, there is no reasonable explanation for why that's the case. It's Linux. It should be a similar experience across the board. And the, right, right, yeah, 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 yeah. We can we can get into that conversation. I'm sure. the The problem it, it seems to be with dependencies, right? Every distribution is going to give you different dependencies. So some of them are going to include uh, dependencies that re- the uh, things re- are that are. It, it's going to require. I lost words there for a second. Um, <laughs> Rebooting. Um, <laughs> yeah. Anyways, every, every distribution is going to send out different dependencies for the things that they are putting on their distro. So if they're shipping like Plasma or whatever, uh, but they're not shipping the latest version of Plasma, they're going to ship dependencies that are going to support that version of Plasma and all the applications that come with it. So, uh, for example, Ubuntu is not right now is shipping a version of GNOME, which is like a spaghetti mishmash version of of GNOME. It has some uh, GNOME 3.38 stuff that has some GNOME 40 stuff, some GNOME 41 stuff, some GNOME 42 stuff, right? They choose the dependencies and the versions of those things, and all that stuff plays into uh, what your experience is on your system. Some of it doesn't actually interact with the hardware. Some of it does, and that's the reason why when you go through and use a, a Linux distribution, no matter what kernel, even if both distributions you're using, you know, use the same kernel, why you would have a different experience. The whole point I bring this up for is because I, on Sunday night, I mean, everything seems to come back to that Sunday night. Like it's like a, like the, it's the period where I decided I hated Linux. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I decided, you know what, obviously vanilla arch is not for me. Like I had been on vanilla arch there for about two weeks for the most part, it was actually a wonderful experience. Like, it was really good. Like, gaming was fine. You know, all this stuff was fine. Uh, but I had the audio problem, and uh, you can't uninstall Pipewire. So I was like, you know what? Fine. I will go to MX Linux. It uses Debian. Debian stable, even. Um, so, it says stable right on the on the tin. Like, it has to be stable, right? So I'll go to that. I, I got to install. They wouldn't go past Grub. <laughs> like it wouldn't even it wouldn't even load up grub it just sat on a black screen with a blinking white cursor and like i've installed mx linux on my computer before i've actually used the exact same iso that i used this time and it worked fine now it didn't and i don't know why like it made no sense at all like this is not new hardware like my my cpu's three years old my gpu's like five or six years old at this point i mean like like not to me but you know when it like, was released, mm-hmm. so I decided to go back to Arco. That's what I've. T- that's what I did. I was like went back to Arco, um. And the funny thing right now is if I open up Pavu Control or Pulse Mixer, there's still an entry there in the input section, <laughs> on on the input section where it shows my amp deck on the input section, which shouldn't even be there. And it still says OBS is pulling from that input source, as, or that output source as an input. Like and this is a different distribution. Like I don't understand what's going on. See, see, so all, all of that to say, just people remember next week. Don't be surprised when the Linux cast at the very bottom has changed to the uh, BSD or you know like whatever cast. You know, just just don't be surprised then. Okay, no, it's not that serious. I'm 100 percent sure that any problems we had on on Linux would be worse on MBSD. I'm just gonna put that out there because it has. Oh, uh, I highly doubt it. Well, it's worse hardware highly. support, man. It has to, right? You um, think it'd be better? I guarantee you, it'd be better because it's just there's a lot less. Don't to, you like, fuck up? All right, first of all, OBS doesn't even exist on BSD. No, the yeah, that's not a thing. So, uh, so, but I could send you. I have a script for um, recording on OpenBSD or uh, recording and stream. I could send that. So, if it, yeah, but would the stream like would work with multiple multiple video sources and all that stuff? Uh, you could do it, but uh, the cool thing is, is the way that you'd have to do it is you essentially have to use one workspace and like load up like XIV or S SXIV or whatever you use for pictures. 
like load up like a full screen image like that you're using with the background, the logo on it and, and everything. And then you could take your two um, uh, webcam windows and put them where you need them on the screen and then start recording. You um, lost me when you said one workspace. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm saying use one workspace, not only you. Like, I'm just saying use one of I them. I know what you meant, but what I have... heard is completely different. <laughs> you tuned out everything. <laughs> like like I, said, I stopped listening. He said one workspace. No. I was like, fuck this shit. I'm not doing that. <laughs> oh, uh, all right. Yeah. Um, Linux sucks, but that's okay. So let's talk about something different for a few minutes, shall we? Sure. Um. If everything goes right and uh, the stream actually works out, like if I get on Sunday, this upcoming Sunday night, there's going to be something special that's going to happen on my YouTube channel. I'm going to be installing Gen 2 live. Um, now, Fuck boys, we know from experience and from damn it, Josh, don't at me on Discord. <laughs> uh, I thought that was on my end for a second. I was like, oh, what was <laughs> Discord freezes every time you at me, okay? Just and there is a streaming mode in uh, uh, Discord, but it, for whatever reason, usually that enables itself. Like when you don't want it to enable, this time it didn't yeah. offer to enable this. So <laughs> screwed. Um, yeah. Anyways, the, the Sunday night, if I can get the stream up and running where it will actually work. I'm going to be installing Gentoo. Now, the reason why is because um, Robert uh, A, uh, Robert A, Robert M, I can't remember his last name, um, has graciously donated uh, well over $200 to my Patreon page and um, got what me. Bracken legend, dude. Uh, uh, he got me briefly above the goal for my Gentoo things. So I'm going to be installing Gentoo. At least in part on Sunday night. The reason why I say is in part because if um, I get tired, I'll pause it and we'll pick it up a week later. Okay, if, if it's just I can only stream for about an hour and a half. So uh, look, it, it, I, look, I'm so excited for this. I mean, I wish I could kiss the ground this man walks on because um, he's. Uh, I mean, he should live in infam infamy forever and ever and ever. Like. Dude, what a G, bro. Like, spent over 200 bucks just so that we could all get the pleasure of watching you install Gentoo and having a great time. Like, like the, the, fun, the fun thing will be the stream starting and you bitching, like, this is fucking it's gonna be so terrible. I'm going to hate this. This is going to suck ass. And then, like, after an hour, you're like, wait, I'm almost done. And um, it's really not that bad. Uh, I kind of like Portage. Like, yeah. We'll see if that happens. So the the thing I'm worried there's a couple things that I'm worried about. First of all, I'm worried that the stream is not going to work. So if if you guys come to the stream Sunday night, it's coming probably around eight o'clock Eastern time or so. Um, use a Kubuntu Live USB and you'll be fine. Just well, install Discord or or what I was or, planning uh, on doing was just using my install of Arco. Because I'm not going to be putting it on the same hard drive. I'm going to be putting it on another hard drive. Okay. Yeah, that, that'll work fine. There's um, no problem doing that. So that's that was my, that's my plan. That way I don't have to worry about an, a live ISO, nothing. Like that. I have another hard drive in my computer. He did it again. Yeah. <laughs> he did it again. Josh, I'm banning you. Stop that. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I will say what, what you will find out is uh, you will have a bad time if you do not read the tips in the handbook when you're installing from like a different installation media or, or, or whatever. Uh, the tips there, they're green and red and okay. just read them. Like, I'm not worried about the, the documentation. The documentation is going to be fine. There's there's right, so there's three things we're going to The stream is number one. The second one is figuring out which ISO to download because let, the last time I tried this, I downloaded the system D ISO and apparently that's the wrong thing to do. Yes. Okay. Very much so. That's fine. Do not use system D on Gen 2. All right. I, I'm already finding myself not liking Gen 2. I'm just going to point that out because frankly, I like system D. The, se the, the second... Look, 
you can, but for like you can, and you can also have a great time with system D on Gen 2, but for your first install and your first system, like getting into and using Gen 2, you don't want system D because you're much more likely to hit an issue and not know like it's more complicated to figure out what caused the issue when you're not familiar with Gen 2 itself and you're trying to install system D, which is not their recommended in yeah. system. That's so. fine. I will try something other than this system D, but oh, I've been told that installing system D on Gen 2 is not a good idea. Of course, Joshua's in the church chat, so system D is fine. Th that's the third thing that I'm worried about is I'm going to have Joshua on one end telling me that, that system D is fine. You should use system D uh, or whatever you want. Uh, and I'm going to have Ben on the other side telling me, no, you should do it this way. And then I'm going to have a third person say, no, that this is the right way to do it. Um, that's my biggest worry. And, and Josh, that's the reason why I didn't take you right up on, you know, actually helping me because I'm going to have nine people helping me. And I'm going to have nine different ways of doing it. And at the end of it, I'm not going to have a gen to install. <laughs> no, it's. It, it, it's really fun. I'm sure I'm like, Josh is not lying. System D is really simple. And if you let him walk you through it, yes, you'd be fine. Like that's the thing with Gen 2. If you try and do it yourself, you're so likely to just skip a part or think that you don't need to read it or whatever. That's almost always what causes an issue. I'm half but. of a mind to do a run through in the next couple of days on my own. So I can discover some problem areas where I might need some help. But also, like I said, like I love my community. I like I love all of you guys. Like every single one of you, you're all fantastic. And everyone who's tried to get me to switch to Gen 2 or use Gen 2 over the last year and a half, I love all you guys too. You're a little bit on the trolley side, especially you, Josh. But <laughs> but I love you guys. The problem is that you all have installed Gen 2 in a different way. Like every single one of you have done some steps differently. And yeah. you're all you're gonna be in the chat on Sunday night telling me this is the way you do it. And I'm going to forget that I've been following this one guide. Like this is the, this is the path that I've chosen to walk down, but I'm going to listen to this dude over here who's done something differently and then go back to the guide. And those two paths that if you follow, you know, if you just follow that one path, it's going to get you to the end. But if you mix them, you're going to end Man, up that, somewhere that, else. That's what I've told you. I, I, I've told you this. I don't know if it was on the podcast or in private, but I've also told other people this. Pick one. You pick one person. And as long as that person, like the only, the only thing that you pick that person for, like whoever you're going to pick that's used Gen 2 or is using Gen 2, like you pick that one person because they're going to be there for, they, they promise to be there throughout the entire install. And as long as they'll do the entire install with you, let you ask questions, just pick one because don't follow anybody else. Don't break it up. Have one person, let them either join the call with you or whatever. I am, I am going to have the VC open in my discord server and there will be, uh, I know Ben has said he's going to be there. Josh has said he, he might pop in. Um, I'm, you'll probably be there probably. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Um, I, I'm, I'm look, fair. if Ben's in there, like, look, Josh, Josh, Love you to death, brother. You're a great guy. But um, if Ben's in there, let Ben walk, walk you through it. Because Ben Ben has like a lot of patience, and he will def. I mean, he will answer. I I have asked Ben some of the dumbest questions that a human being can definitely ask the other one, and he's been <laughs> been super nice and patient very, with me to patient. walk me through all my questions. All right. Well, we'll see how it goes. Um. It's going to be an interesting experience because I've promised not only to install it, but actually live in it for a week. Uh, obviously, living in, a week, in, in it for a week is going to be predicated on it actually being installed and usable. Because if I can't actually get in there and do work, I can't use it. That's one of the reasons why it's being installed on a secondary hard drive that I can... If, if something goes wrong, I can just say, you know, fuck this. I'm going back to Arco. I have my Arco installed. It works fine. So that's the reason why. So, um, yeah, it's good. It's, it's going to be a very, I want to say it's going to be a fun experience. Um, and I'm sure I'm going to learn a lot, but I'm also sure that I, I'm sure that by the end of the stream, I'm going to be very, very frustrated. 
And for Code Mize, by the way, uh, oh, wait a minute, I'm fat? I didn't know I was fat. I woke up this morning, looked in the mirror, oh, no, what happened? By the way, that's a Louis Anderson joke. Fantastic <laughs> fat comedian. <laughs> I, I can't remember i can't remember the guy's name there was another comedian that had the same uh, uh, no it was uh ralphie may ralphie may yeah. had the same he's joke another, like, another he's not he's another good fat comedian also john panette so good. oh god he's john so... john panette is so funny he, he goes salad i don't want that sa salad isn't food salad goes with the food <laughs> <laughs> Um, I get comments like that all the time. Like, like I know I'm a big dude. <laughs> I'm working on it. All right. I have shitty knees. I can't go out running. I have I a like, cane to I, prove it. I like, like I had like my, my great aunt, uh, she had a glandular problem. And so she like, couldn't lose weight past a certain point. Like, so she was always bigger. And like, she, one day we were out and someone was like, I mean, I, 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 I don't want to be rude or anything, but just in case, like, you know, like, uh, we offer a diet program here. And she goes, goes ma'am, trust me, I, I, I know I'm overweight. You can say it. It's fine. She goes, the diet won't help me. But thank you, though. I'm, <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, like, I'm in shape. <laughs> Round is a shape. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, Josh, I know that wasn't you pinging me on Discord. That was someone else. It's now become a thing. I'm being trolled on Discord because everybody knows... That I'm being that that if if they ping me on Discord, I I've never been this popular on Discord in my entire life. Now everybody knows that if they ping me, my Discord freezes and I can't do anything about it for like ten minutes. Uh, it's ridiculous. Uh, it, it, it just to go back to the actual main topic of today. Just Discord sucks, man. Discord is so terrible. And the thing is, is like usually if you use the flat pack version of Discord. You can at least bypass some of the bugginess of the version that comes with in the Arch repos. Usually. This yeah, time, usually didn't happen. Like, I'm using the Flatpak version. It still has this stupid bug that's been around for six months. It's fucking stupid. I don't know. Mm -hmm. All right. So... <laughs> I love I, I love Ben's Ben's response. Don't bother Josh. I'm gonna be there helping him. Like, like, I got that's the reason why I want both of them to be there because maybe if they fight enough, I won't have to install Gentoo. They'll just be fighting <laughs> between themselves the whole time, and I won't. I'll just sit there. And, you know, I'll be like, yeah, I'm eating popcorn. You know. <laughs> <laughs> ben and Josh just fight over how they're gonna SSH into your machine and install it for you. You're like, you're like, this is sweet, man. I don't have to. Oh, do I should definitely do that. Have just off to the side, hire somebody to do it for me, and then just record that as if I I could just make typing sides sounds. Just untype, unplug my keyboard, make typing sounds the whole time, <laughs> and somebody that's actually doing it for me. <laughs> you know ben would do that for you like ben or josh or one of those or one of those guys they'd fight over the right to do it for you they're like, I'm no, i'll do it for free like they talk themselves down all the way from like 200 bucks <laughs> all the way down to free I i'm sure robert who paid all that money is really excited about me having somebody else do it for me <laughs> <laughs> and you're just sitting there making keyboard noises <laughs> I oh. i'm just imagining like as things are being typed on the screen there's like like super shitty, like lined up key sounds. Like there's like four like letters have been pressed, and you just hear like you like slam four <laughs> fingers on the keyboard. It, it's like every single uh, like advertisement that has somebody typing in it. You can see them typing, but it's that obviously fake typing because nobody types like that. <laughs> God. Like, I'm sorry. like oh, it, it's even worse. Like. That whole situation is even worse, not in advertisements, but like on TV shows where they're supposed to have done research on how to do things. But you see like, like on NCIS, zoom in to the pixelated thing and they have to type 5,000 words and actually order to do it. And then they, they, you can obviously tell the person's usually a hunter and pecker, right? But he's mm -hmm. trying not to be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's quite obvious that... The, <laughs> you time. Oh... Another I, one from I, Discord. You, anytime people talk about like peckers when it comes to keyboards, like I like that's the shit that gets me because like I, it's painful for me because that was me, like I had to deal with that teaching my grandfather a lot of, about computers, and it's just it's painful like to see someone be like, 
okay, they've got a sentence, like, you know, they've got a, like eight, eight words that they want to type out in a sentence. And you just see them like pressing one key and then looking around and then well, going and pressing the I other mean, key. When, like, when they're just getting started, you can't help it. I mean, oh, I know, but it's still like, no matter what, like when you know how to type, it's painful because you're like, oh, like you want to do it for them. But then you're like, you've got to like, they have to learn, like, you know, you, you have to get used to where keys are and it's a whole process, but it's just, it's painful because you're like, okay, I could do this like seven times faster. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> See, the thing is my mom is 80 years old. She can, I mean, she's not a very t- fast typist. She's never going to be, but she's not hunter, a hunter and pecker anymore. She can use multiple fingers. Mm-hmm. Um, so my, gran- my grandfather can now like text really fast on the phone he still sends me like four letter like text back you know I send him a nice thing about how I you know like am going to come over help out do something like whatever and I'll get a I get a response that's either two to four like letters okay or like cool okay like, so <laughs> my mother can't type on a phone at all like she, she hates it she can't stand it so she uses the speech to text thing on her Android phone <laughs> Oh, no. oh man! Some of the, she it, 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 sometimes so she doesn't really understand that in traditional SMS there's like a text there's a character limit right there's like 140 characters something like that. So when she texts back and forth between her sisters, she'll sit there and talk to the phone for like 10 minutes just to say it comes through. The, and, and you know when that happens, right? When you, you have send a text that is too long, it splits them into pieces. But a yeah. lot of times, because of the way the technology works, they come in out of order. <laughs> so I just, I pity her poor sister who has to try to put that stuff together. And obviously, there's the whole speech to text problem, where it's definitely some of the things that come out of it just, that's definitely not what she said. <laughs> that horrifies the hell out of me. At that point, I'm like, just call her, call her and talk. Like, I hate when I get those, like, super long messages. I'm like, yo, like... She resisted doing text messages for a long time because it used to be... I mean, at this point, you're probably too young for actually knowing this. But it used to be you had to pay for... Like, you get when you got your phone plan, you got, like, 500 Mm -hmm. text messages, right? That's all you get. Or you'd have to pay for them per text message. Um, (laughs) And especially that's that's especially true with the the, like, the prepaid plans that we pretty much always had. Um... So she she resisted a long time, and then when we finally got into a plan that had unlimited, we finally talked her into doing text messages, and she's liked it ever since. But she still refuses to type on the thing; she talks to it. I fi- I find it hilarious, but um, luckily, the text to speech stuff has gotten way better. Like it's gotten way yeah. better in like the last year and a half or so. But when she first started doing, God, it was so bad. Like, and, and, and here, here's the thing: is like. For 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 you and me, there's not really a big difference between Google and Apple. We consider them both not very good companies. But when you're actually using their products, you can really tell the difference between Google and Apple's speech to text. Google is just like 300 million times better than Apple ever is. If you use an, an iPhone and try to do the speech to text stuff, it is so bad. It's like comedic bad. <laughs> yeah, like it's well, I mean it's it. <sighs> It, it it mainly has to do with like Siri. Like, I mean, if you if you think about it, Siri's just kind of never been a, like Google's assistant was out of the gate better than Siri by a yeah. large margin. Which is stupid because Siri came first, right? Like exactly, yeah. Like they should have been like Google Assistant was yet another thing that Google ripped off from uh, something else, right? Mm. Yeah, but see, I think I, I think that's why Google has the reputation they do because like they'll just like they'll take ideas that they're like in other places in the marketplace and they'll try doing them them th- themselves and if it works out because they didn't have to put in nearly as much effort because they're pretty much starting with a w- with an idea already or a foundation that's easily built up because look at what a competitor is doing and try and do the same thing copycat it. Um, so, like, if that works out for them, then awesome, they keep it. And then when they try and do their own stuff, like... They, they kill you know, it almost immediately. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, if it doesn't become instantly huge, they're like, nah, we spent too much. Ax it. Get rid of it. Like, Stadia. Like, Stadia was, like, a good idea, right? And it's already dying. It's, like, a year and a half old. And they're already thinking about killing it off or rebranding it or redoing it or something like yeah. that. It's, like, like... Well, I mean, if they had made it a better value, like, see, the thing with these streaming services, like, I don't think 
like they get is like if you can if you can compete and provide an even more solid version of GeForce now where I can take my Steam games or take game libraries from Steam, Epic, all these places, and just you have the machine to run the game, stream it to me. Like, that's incredible because, like, I am I am all for that because that means OpenBSD on any machine I want to run on would be great because I could play any game on there. It, it'd be great. I'm down for it. The problem is, is GeForce Now is still not even a completely stable experience, even with good internet like all the time and like it's pretty much it, it feels like beta software is like what it feels like and yeah. there's no other competitor that's doing better in geforce now as long as you're willing to wait it's free so like well that's the thing about that stuff is that we always i mean everybody always knew that that's that whole idea was going to be janky from the beginning like it was always going to be one of those things where the technology wasn't quite there yet no matter what service you chose like it's just not there yet especially because it relied on internet speed like um, the vast majority of people are still using internet that gets 30 megabits or less in the united states like and that's really slow i mean for the longest time that was me like even like a year and a half ago we still had speeds around 30 megabits down and we were lucky to get five up that's just the way the, the way it is. It's gotten way better now, but it's still something that most people have to deal with. Is that it's not dial up slow, of course, but still it's not like yeah. if you go to Japan, you're getting five gigs. You know what I mean? We're just now seeing advertisements from AT and T that says they'll offer you five gigs in certain places. Mm. Total Which, myth. I mean, I mean yeah. <laughs> that that's a unicorn if I've ever seen one. <laughs> yeah, and, and also probably costs three thousand dollars. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll pass. But but the, the the point is that for those services that we rely on having a not only not only a fast broadband thing, but also a like a, a stable one. It's like you can't have a, a an internet connection that goes like a wave. <laughs> you know, it yeah. has it has to be. And your ping can be terrible either. Like that server needs to be pretty close to you too. Yeah. Um. So. Th- that's a, that was always going to those services were always going to be very iffy until the technology and the infrastructure caught up. That's the reason why Microsoft has been so slow in rolling theirs out. You know, yeah, and like that. That's a even further point to like bring it back to Google Stadia. That like from the get go, this should have been a long term project. Like yeah, like now you're kind of just laying the foundation for when the infrastructure and technology is where it needs to be. The thing is, is that it, it, Google has obviously a very good track record of setting up servers, like setting up server farms and stuff like that. So they had that ability to make that infrastructure good. So they could have solved the whole latency issue by just creating a whole bunch of server farms all over the place. Obviously, an expensive proposition, but if you're gonna invest in something, you might as well invest it. If you go half-ass, you're just gonna, you're gonna cancel it no matter what. Sure. The thing is, they also had a company called Google Fiber that they were going to revolutionize internet across America, and they ended up only doing like six cities across the board. They stopped. Like it was ex- nobody knows why they stopped. Like they couldn't compete or they couldn't get local governments to actually let them come in or something i don't know uh but that could have been the the other half of the solution is because you could have brought that kind of stuff to places that like we, we live in the middle of farms here right like if, oh. if if i walk half a mile that way there's cows across the street there's ponies there's there's horses right i can look out the window yeah, I see a horse. Okay, that, that, that's that's the area that I'm in. We just now got the ability to get one gig internet here, like within the last few months. Um, it's not even really all that expensive. I probably might eventually, you know, sign up for it. But the point is, is that a lot of places aren't that. And Google could have, Google could have solved that problem. Instead, they decided to create internet in balloons. Yeah. I mean, like, like, no, that's no, no. I mean, yeah, like. Elon Musk, I don't like Elon Musk all that much. I think he's a weird person. But, I mean, all geniuses are eccentric, right? So we'll just give him a pass. Uh, But he's put, like, 5,000 satellites up in space to decide that's how he's going to change the internet, you know, 
infrastructure. Don't know if that's going to work or not, but you know, it's better than giving up. And that's what Google seems to be good at. Is like if if it doesn't succeed in the first six months, we're going to cancel it. And like you said, it, that was a long term thing, right? It was. It had to no, be a long term. It, it thing. has to be long term. Mm-hmm. Like if you if you have half a brain at a, as at an executive level, like you know, this is not an investment in the short term. Like. I mean, like, it's the same problem with all these absolutely dim-witted projects that you see, the metaverse projects that you see now. Like, by the way, if you're invested in any metaverse, like, and I know you're not, obviously, Matt, but anyone in the chat or anybody who's watching, if you're invested in a metaverse project like Earth 2 or any of those things, like, look, they're all scams. They're all stupid. The technology is not there. And it won't be there. And when also, by the way, the companies that will get it there are companies like Epic and stuff. So all that you're purchasing into will be obsolete by the time the technology does get there. And they won't be able to compete because they are obsolete already. Um, so anyway, like all of that to say, like there's a whole bunch, like it's the same sort of mindset as that. Like you, when it comes to stadium and everything, you're investing in getting a brand and a like the infrastructure started. And the goal is to continue spending and essentially losing money until the infrastructure has hit the point where it's possible and it's extremely good. And then you tr- hopefully can turn up the monetization a ton and boost it like you boost your user base get people interested and wanting to use it because hey guess what now you can actually play games with no input lag no problems it's reliable across most of developed countries like yeah that would be the goal but it's not happening and it's like i don't understand why the 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 games industry is a like a fifty billion dollar a year, maybe even more, or whatever. It's a it's a very large industry, and Google could have tapped into that by selling games because that's what they were basically going to do. And people, for whatever reason, decide that paying sixty dollars for a game is fine, and they've made that decision. And you could do that, like that's how you make your money back, right? But it's not going to cause you to get your money back right away. It has to be long term. We have meandered through this entire podcast this is this is what happens when you don't have a plan we did this this was our last we did a uh our last episode at the end of the year last year we had no plan we did the exact same thing we meandered through a whole bunch of topics it was very fun um I, wait a minute did did i see in the chat that, that scott is going to install lfs now <laughs> did i see this is he going to stream uh, that apparently I, our art center is going to do LF, lfs it, it Oh wow! Okay. Good job, man. It's good. Yeah. Good. That should be fun. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. and to answer Alex, yes, I have a quest too. The tech is good, but no, it's not. Can't. Still, metaverses is not really a tech. If you believe metaverses are a thing, guess what? Wow, is a fucking metaverse. Like. <laughs> like yeah. Like, <laughs> Just because I slap my like, guess what? VR chat, it's a metaverse. It's actually got thousands of metaverses right, in so it. So the the metaverse is a response by Facebook for two of two things. One, people are leaving Facebook well, three things. One, Facebook people are leaving Facebook in droves. Like nobody's using Facebook anymore because it's horrible. Um uh two, the world fucking sucks. Like the world is ending. Like we got World War Three, and there's a fucking plague, and uh, inflation's like five thousand percent. So of course people want to escape their everyday reality because reality fucking sucks. And and the and the third thing, which I've obviously forgotten what the third thing was, but <laughs> the, the 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 point is is that they all oh, the th- the third thing was a result of the second one is that more and more people are working from home. And therefore are spending more and more time in meetings and, and they want to change the way meetings are to make them more, quote unquote, realistic. How being a cartoonized a, a cartoonized version of yourself is more realistic than just hey, look, watching a webcam? I don't know. I, I have a VR headset. Look, if my boss told me that we needed to start using that to like have meetings, I'd be down with it. Like it's it, it's kind of, it would kind of I mean, it's. 
you'd be done with it for the first time. No, I, I mean, it, like, to be honest, like, it'd be fine because, I mean, it's kind of like sitting in a boardroom talking. Like, it'd be fine. Okay. So, and uh, also, it, that, that would mean that your boss knows for sure that you're actually there because mm-hmm. he can sure. tell. Like, Tommy, but, this is, I've never worn a VR headset, so I might be completely off base on this, but true or false, VR headsets can get warm. Like, they can cause your head to sweat just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. So, like, you want to sit in a three hour know. meeting every single day in the middle of Tennessee where it gets fairly warm in the summer, you know, in meetings, Not playing my, game. On, my, my fans on right now. I've watched, I've watched uh three hour movie or I mean, not quite okay. three hour movies, but close to it. I, I can't see it. myself being interested, in, interested in doing that, but I mean, like, look, here's the thing I said, I'd be down with it. But the thing is, is it doesn't get like, it, it doesn't, it's not necessary. And you also like the whole idea of like the metaverse and that whole bullshit marketing scheme and everything is look, we're going to recreate the matrix. That's not going to happen unless your idea of the matrix is VR chat, which you can go and look up on YouTube because it already exists. If that's your idea of the matrix, cool. It already exists. Um, None of these metaverse projects are going to do it. And also who wants to live inside of a VR headset? Like, I don't want to live inside of a VR headset. The version 2.0 that comes out three years from now, I'm still like, I don't care if they make it like water cooled and like they also like make it deliver Coca Cola and like cocaine straight to my nose. I'm still not interested. Like, I, I, I don't want to live in it. I, I, I don't want to. And so the whole marketing scheme of this metaverse that, Hey, we're going to make this world that you're going to live in. And it's awesome. And it's definitely worth investing in. Like, no, it's not. And if, even if the metaverse isn't VR, it's just a regular game. That's even dumber because world of Warcraft is a metaverse then. And you can get invested in world of Warcraft. Dump thousands of dollars in there. You'll never see a return. Just like you'll never see a return in the metaverse. The biggest problem with the metaverse is that they're trying to treat it as a replacement for reality. If they, if this was just a game, if it was just say, hey, you want to let's play your your favorite games, and you can like do uh, Dungeons and, and Dragons or any other kind of like role play game. That'd be kind of no, cool. See, that's the problem. You can't do that. Like again, the whole idea of the metaverse is it's a, a, it's an idea propagated by retards who don't understand copyright. Because the whole idea that you're going to take all of these different IPs from different things and shove them in there and it's going to be fine. Like, no, um, that's not how the world works. Well, uh, if you take Nintendo characters and put them into your little metaverse, if you don't think Nintendo is going to come over with a big old schlong and ruin your day, you <laughs> don't know Nintendo at all. <laughs> Bend over, Mark. I got this. <laughs> 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 you can't you can't that whole idea is dumb and it's not going to happen unless we completely take away copyright and copyright laws which well, i mean obviously nothing. the whole thing is going to have to deal around a whole bunch of licensing stuff but more yeah. likely instead of having one gigantic metaverse which is controlled by you know meta aka facebook instead you're going to have you know, small, uh, like Nintendo's going to have their metaverse and it's just going to be Nintendo characters. You're going to have a, 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 here's the problem with saying metaverses and shit. It's games. Like it's a game at the end of the day. It's a game. And I don't care if the digital assets are tied to some blockchain at the end of the day, it's still DLC or something for your game. Don't like, don't, that's it. Don't bring in blockchain to it. it. It makes it worse. (laughs) <laughs> like I know, I know they're going to, but the, yeah, but don't don't do that. It, it'll make it worse. But that's exactly what it should be: is, is games. Like it, it's when you try to make it say, "Hey, this is going to be a replacement for your reality." You yeah. can't. It, you, if you eat something inside of the metaverse, it doesn't actually provide you any sustenance. You can't yeah. piss inside of a metaverse. <laughs> You're just gonna end up peeing your pants. <laughs> you know so. Yeah, it's just I don't I don't understand why you'd want it, right? Like 
I, I, I can understand wanting to escape reality through a game, like putting on your quest and playing that sword game that blasts the, yeah. the, the but whatever. See, that's that's playing a game, though. It's just more right. immersive. I, I, At the I, end of the day, it's I understand. Still that's the reason why you do it. That That's escape from reality, and that is something that is age old. It's something, the reason why we've always played video games is to. It's why you read fantasy novels and uh, graphic novels and fan fiction, whatever. It's why you do those things. That's perfectly fine. We've always done it. It's when you transition from making, uh, taking the reason why we do those things into trying to transition to making it why we do meetings and why we do interact with other people and trying to um, make uh, gamify the the reality of well, stuff right it's well i think the thing about metaverses is the idea that like it's an investment like that's typically the problem that i see in it is like you're going to live in this place this place is where you're going to do stuff and this is where like we're going to try and like monetize everything and you own las vegas <laughs> yeah exactly like we're going to monetize everything but Instead of it just being you buying this DLC, like really nice apartment in downtown, like we're going to make it like an actual digital asset that you can sell between other play. Like it's it's this whole stupid idea of trying to monetize everything and make it a investment with which is not really a thing. Like I, I'm sorry, but like I know that you might be able to sell your steam library to another dipwad out there for for some cheaper amount but most likely most people are going to just purchase their own steam games build up their steam library from scratch because hey it's actually smarter that way because yeah. you end up with only games that you want but nfts make sense with digital art like people who are actual no, artists. no no no, no they just, don't. just listen to me like okay actual artists like monet or you know uh, the whatever like people who are actually like painting stuff and then you use the nft to actually buy the physical object and the nft is only like your receipt like it's it's all that is like you're actually buying the thing and the, the way nfts are right now is you're not actually buying the thing you don't get the copyright you get none of that stuff you're just buying the receipt but see that's the problem like the nft in that transaction doesn't even need, like that doesn't even need to happen like the nft has nothing to do with your receipt there because you could have just bought the art with cryptocurrency and there you go you have your receipt that transaction is the receipt the problem with an nft is it's art or something tied to like to a transaction through a link so you've purchased the right to a link to something that's hosted somewhere else that it's someone else can take away or stop hosting also it. Anytime. Still owns like you don't own exactly. the copyright. You didn't. You didn't buy the copyright. You didn't even buy the actual image. Okay. Like yeah, you can download yeah. it from the site, but you only bought the link that we're, leads. We're to on this. It. We're on the same page with with this. But let me. You understand this, and I understand this, and I think the vast majority of people in the chat and who are listening to this understand this. But there are people out there, maybe they'll stumble upon this podcast someday, that don't understand this. Let me just drop some knowledge on y'all. If you have somehow stumbled into cryptocurrency and have made yourself a mint, like you've you invested in ETH in in um, Ethereum really early, and now you have a, a million dollars in Ethereum. Do not, under any circumstances, waste your million dollars that you've made in Ethereum, which is Monopoly money anyways. Uh, do not waste that money on a, a, a gorilla, like a, a picture of, of a, a pixelated gorilla. Don't do that. Instead, figure out how you can safely get that million dollars into real spendable money that you can then buy a gallon of gas with. Yes. Um, you know, <laughs> or buy those resources like investing in stocks and gas companies, stuff like that. Turn it into, well, what most people would call safe investments in, 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 in real money like people are gonna there's gonna be someone out there that listens to all the way to the end of the podcast and and sees um us talking about cryptocurrency and like oh cryptocurrency is real money no it's not it's fake no. money you you can't show me cryptocurrency therefore it's not real money um and, and well you and, and, until you get to the point where you can take a bitcoin and buy a, a big mac with it you know, you're, yeah. um, we're, we, which 
again, I still think some people think we're living in a world where you can do that real easy. Well, uh, um, there are websites where you can use cryptocurrency to buy stuff. That is 100% oh, sure. true. Yeah. But webs But you get We're in the meta We're in the metaverse again where the on the internet you're just that's just two, you know, uh digital transactions. When you, it's if you can't take your money out into the real world, go to Kroger or, you know, Ralph's or whatever and buy your groceries with it, then it's not real money yet. Maybe eventually someday Bitcoin will be that thing, but it's not there yet. And and it probably won't be cause... because it's being bogarted by scam artists and, uh, you know, money launderers. You know, the, the, that's why every time we talk about cryptocurrency, I always say the initial idea behind an, a decentralized monetary system is a good one. Right. It's a good idea not to have government, you know, in control of the money supply. Fantastic idea. The problem is in a situation where there's no regulation at all. You're, you're yeah, living in an, an you're you're living in an anarchist you know situation. People are going to take advantage of the fact that there are no freaking rules, because mm -hmm. even even good people in a situation where there are no rules turn into opportunists. If you don't no, believe me, read Lord. Like, are so common. Read Lord of the Flies. It happened. Okay, like it's a it's a whole novel. It was written in like. I don't know. It was written a long time ago. It's human fucking nature. No rules equals anarchy. That's the way it is. And 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 unfortunately, because of the the because of that situation that cryptocurrency has found itself in, it has gained a reputation of being for scams. And I don't see, and I don't know if you agree with this or not, but I don't see a situation where it can come back from that reputation. I don't think it can fix itself. Like at this point. Everybody, every normal person who, who's not invested in the crypto sphere and is not a technological person and doesn't know how blockchain works, they hear blockchain or and cryptocurrency on you know Lester Holt's nightly news, and they think it's a scam. Yep. A and I don't see how you take that reputation and fix it. I yeah. just don't. Well, I mean, with cryptocurrency, there's just there's so many scams in it, but that doesn't mean all the technology there or all the cryptocurrencies are well, scams. You and I know this, but exactly. Like, but I mean, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's what makes it so confusing for other people. It's like when there's you, you know, like in unregulated markets, it's 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 very hard for people to understand. Like, hey, it's unregulated, so of course there can be thousands of scams going on at the same time. Doesn't mean that they all are. Um, but uh, I don't know, like when it comes to cryptocurrency, I, uh, I think it's really just one of those things where, look, do your research and you'll probably be good as long as, you know, you're the person who actually does research. You don't just check the, co the like the company or projects Twitter and you see all of their like propaganda shit. And you're like, oh, yeah, this is great. This is awesome. They're not just like two days old. They must be real. Like, uh, as long as you're not that daft, like you're, you'll be fine. Yeah, I'm gonna disagree so. with you. From, from maybe from some people who are who have, if you're if you're that guy and you want to invest in cryptocurrency and you are smart about it, just like you just said, yeah. do so with only money you're willing to lose. That's the way it should be with any investment. Well, I mean, that's how you should be doing with any right. investment. I, I understand that. But you're much more likely to lose money in cryptocurrency than you probably are in like a a, 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 a stock you know, market. A stock or bond. Right. You know, something like that. If you put in your, if you invest in just the, like the S&P 500, that thing has gained like 13% over the last 30 years. It's just, it's like night and day. Like, yes, it goes up and down, but as an average, it goes up, right? A lot of that stuff especially like the retirement fund stuff is actually meant to never actually lose a lot of money because it's meant to be over time. It's supposed to be very stable, right? It, yeah. it, it, the problem a lot of times with cryptocurrency is that it draws in desperate people, people who are trying, they, they see everyone on Dr. Phil that when he talks about cryptocurrency or, you know, on the news or whatever, Hey, I made a million dollars in like 30 seconds. They see this, like, you know what? I can do that. I, yeah. I, I, I really need money. I need to pay rent this month. Oh, and see, that's so bad. Yeah. I feel so bad for those yeah. people. And it happens all the time. And that's the reason why these rug pull things for like the NFTs and stuff, like the, like Logan Paul and 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 all this stuff. When they they do these scams, 
y- you know, there's no regulation to stop them, obviously, but also yeah. it pulls in their fans who some, some of them are just, you know, whatever they're, they're fanboys and they want to give money. Um, no. As long as you have the money to give and you want to do it, do what you want. But it's the desperate yeah. people, the people that you're actually hurting uh, that is giving cryptocurrency and stuff the bad name because you hear all these stories like I lost everything. Like I invested everything in this and I've lost it all. Yeah. yeah. It, and, and I mean, like the sad thing is, is those influencers are the like they're set up in the perfect position. They're the only ones that can pull off these scams because mm-hmm. these scams cost a lot of money to get set up. But your your return on investment is massive, and all you have to do is just walk away with it. Like that's it. And there's no regulating body that's going to come after you, other than the SEC. And as far as we know, they haven't done shit. So well, most of these influencers are getting away with it. So. Regulation always it always is behind the pace of technological innovation, right? Yeah. That's just always the is. But also, got to remember that the average age of people in the FTC in the in the in the Senate is probably over fifty. You know, yeah, yeah. You know, those yeah. people can't try even... explaining a explaining a non fungible token to someone who's in their sixties. <laughs> You'll have a great time. Go on YouTube, Google a uh, blockchain in Congress. There's actually a guy who tried to explain blockchain to a senator. It was utter gold. It was so good. It, it it was like trying to explain how uh like nuclear fission works to a to a baby. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was absolutely gold. It was very fun. Uh and you could just see the look on that senator's face at the end that he did not understand a single word that that guy had said. <laughs> I don't even um, think he understood the guy's name. <laughs> like, I think he <laughs> lost him after the, the introduction. It was so, so good. And, I mean, like, you can't blame... I mean, we get an email every time we make a, a generalization about old people. And I'm not going to make that gener- generalization because, obviously, there's a lot of people, you know, older people who understand this stuff. But oh, yeah. let's make a generalization of the people who are in Congress. They're all idiots. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> yeah. I think that's a fair statement. They're all freaking morons. You can't explain technology to them at all because they want to, they're trying to create laws that are very general in scope, you know, and they don't understand the stuff. So they create bad laws. It's not a great situation. Okay. We really have to stop this. We've been going for an hour and a half live and uh, it's been a long podcast so uh that is it for the linux cast excuse me you're excused next no week problem. we're gonna do the topic that we were going to do ne- uh, next week we're going to do the topic we're going to do this week and that is we're going to be talking about should linux be a do-it-yourself distro i think when you came up with this topic you were specifically thinking about linux from scratch right yes okay so we're going to talk about should linux from scratch be something should it be a thing you know should, yeah. I, should it should it be should it exist is it a good idea that kind of stuff so that'll be next week if you want to get we didn't even do contact information here so if you want to get in contact with us uh, you can do so all that stuff is going to be at the linuxcast.org slash contact all that stuff uh is there if you want to support us on patreon patreon.com slash linuxcast zany has a patreon as well that link will be in the probably in the video description i think it's there i'm not actually sure if that's there it's patreon.com slash Official Zany, maybe? No, um, wait, hold on. My Patreon? Patreon? Yeah, aka Zany. aka Zany. The problem is he has different names all over the place. Zany is the only thing that, you know, is like through all of them. Uh, YouTube.com slash ZanyOG is uh, his YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to him there. YouTube.com slash LinuxCast for the LinuxCast. We are uh, like 300 away from 10,000 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button if you haven't if you already have subscribed thank you so much before we go we should take a moment to thank my current patrons robert sid devon patrick fred kramer meglin jack time tool steve a Cyber linux garrick samuel mitchell art center carbon data jeremy sean odin martin e andy ross merrick cam josh lee j dog peter a crucible dark bennett six and primus i don't know why i can do that so good on the stream and it absolutely bombs every time i do it on a video like seriously uh josh <laughs> you just had to do it one last time all right yep. anyways so that is it uh for this uh stream and this podcast we will see you guys next week Boy.